Bostonians know it as both the Longfellow and the Salt and Pepper Bridge. They know that the Charles River runs underneath it. What most folks don't know, however, is something else that's underneath it. You'll find it at the Cambridge side of the bridge where pedestrians and keenly observant drivers can catch sight of what looks like an outdoor public, if partially hidden, trophy room, which is pretty much exactly what it is. So when I first started it, there used to be right there a wall that had angle irons and it looked like shelves and those shelves were desperately calling out to be decorated. The decorating came about by accident according to the local professional who started it all and who prefers to remain anonymous. He found his first trophies at the local dump. A guy pulls next to me and said, do you know where I can throw these out? And he's got a box of silver and gold vintage bowling trophies. And they were beautiful. Like, Put them in my trunk, I'm taking those. And I started really small, put a few out sort of while I was jogging. Not only did the trophies remain, things took off. People started adding their own trophies. It really became an interesting underground art project. But in 2013, Calamity, the art project, met the state's Longfellow Bridge renovation project, all the trophies cleaned out and gone. But the bridge renovation wrapped up in 2018, and people began adding trophies again shortly thereafter. In some ways, it's grown back bigger. It's much bigger. One thing that I really enjoy about it is there are very few things that have meaning from our childhood. Record albums, gone. Nobody prints photographs anymore. Books, everything's digital, but these trophies really transcend the ages. And with that, a new addition, apparently an Irish step dancing trophy, saved from the trash. Well, you're taller, wanna do the honors? Congratulations to whoever earned that way back when. Further west in Palmer, Mass, not a bridge, but another place that, from the outside, also hides its own art project, though there are clues. I've got thousands of objects. I mean, I've been collecting antiques since I was a teenager. But Bruce Rosenbaum isn't just about old stuff. He's about mixing old things with new technology, steampunk, which in his craftsman's hands often rises to remarkable art. For me, steampunk really takes this form, this fusion of history plus art plus technology. It's this kind of wonderful mashing up of time periods and objects and people. I mean, really, this is massive recycling. It's the ultimate recycling. Rosenbaum had an earlier successful career in marketing. Then in 2000, he and his wife Melanie renovated a 1901 Victorian in Sharon, Mass, known today as the steampunk house. So we were kind of like, okay, let's bring in antiques from around that age. Well, wouldn't it be cool to take the boring looking technology, the computers, the TVs, you know, the appliances, and integrate it into these beautiful objects. The project established Rosenbaum as something of a visionary. The Wall Street Journal dubbed him the guru of steampunk. And when the antique organ he turned into a computer workstation went viral, the nerdy dad suddenly earned some serious new cred from his kids. It went on the internet and my son is yelling from downstairs, dad, dad, you're not gonna believe it. He comes running up and he says, your, your desk has become a meme. And this was, a, this was some years ago, and I go, great, what's a meme? <laughs> With their kids grown, the Rosenbaums look for a new reuse project. In 2016, they found it in a 140-year-old former church in Palmer. We saw the cathedral space, our hearts jumped, and we said, this is it. The Gothic building is now a living space, a workspace, home to the Rosenbaum's design business, Modvik, and not least, a unique steampunk museum. So never mind what you've done with it, who knew from a Hudson Terraplane? Terraplane, isn't that a, a great name? And these are the actual size of the front of the car. We saw our elephant. What do you say? Wait for it. Whimsy aside, what Rosenbaum really wants visitors to appreciate here is that people and things can have second, even third acts in life. Call it steampunk or call it resilience. That piece was destined for the trash bin because it doesn't have a function anymore. I'm giving it new life, new purpose. Well, that is such a great metaphor for our own lives. We feel sometimes obsolete, you know, in a rut. You need flexible thinking that we can evolve or change. 
So while the hidden outdoor trophy room under the Longfellow Bridge is of course open 24 seven, the same is not true for Bruce Rosenbaum's steampunk museum. It is located in his home after all. But if you are interested in learning more about Bruce's collection, you will find a link on our website.